Today, a news on why it matters special child grooming exposed during Pride Month. You are not going to believe your eyes. We've got a lot coming up for you, and it all starts right now. Welcome to the News and White Matters. I am Sarah Gonzalez, uh, and we've got to, we've got a, a big one for you today, guys. I, I have to say, make sure that you have taken your blood pressure medication. Uh, also, make sure that small children are not watching this because uh, the entire point, which we'll get into, is that this is very much adult content that we are going to expose today. That is being, of course, shown uh, to children here today to give their firsthand accounts of what has happened over the weekend at a drag brunch for children are Alex Stein, Blaze TV contributor and host of The Conspiracy Castle. Uh, also, we are joined by assistant editing manager of Next News Network, Aldo Borazzoni. That is Ooh, that's a mouthful. Stay with the rest, but thank you. Aldo good good job. Uh, and, uh, of course, Blaze TV contributor John Doyle, also host of Heck Off Commie. You guys were all on the ground here for this look. We might have time to get to some other stories today. I'm not really sure because, as far as I'm concerned, this is the most important thing going on in the entire country right now. Um, so Libs of TikTok exposed this particular drag brunch. It was called, what was it called? Drag Your Kids drag to Pride? Drag the Kids to Pride. Drag the Kids to Pride. And it was a drag queen brunch that was uh, at a gay bar. Am I getting all that correct? Yes, you're okay. right so far. So it's a gay bar. They were hosting a drag brunch for children specifically. They were targeting, they were marketing towards the, the kids. And you guys decided we're going to do something about it. So well, you you said something to me about it last week. I Look, I want to say I almost went. I had to speak at the Turning Point event. Um, it's probably a good thing I didn't go because I feel like I would have gotten arrested. You would have got arrested. And I want to start <laughs> off by saying this because I'm wearing my pink tie for Pride Month and I know Sarah's wearing her pink. Listen, I'm not homophobic, I'm not anti-gay, I'm not anti-LGBTQ or any of that, IA, whatever, intersex, whatever adjective you want to add to it. But what was happening at this event was targeted towards children. It was not, it, this gives the gay community a bad name. So it was actually evil and demonic. And uh, I'm happy we exposed it, but it, it was like, uh, I kind of had like a PTSD after it. Yeah, I, um, I was very angry just... Um just watching the videos that you guys took, which we'll, we'll get to here in a second. Um, what struck me, Alex, was that you were so passionate and fired up about it, even the next day. We talked uh, yesterday evening, and you were still just so upset about it. And I'm like, guys, why is it that you three gentlemen are sitting in front of me, none of you have children, mm -mm. right? Where were where were the dads? Where were the parents? Why is it that you, Aldo, who, you know, you're this budding reporter on the scene, you know, going in to get the exclusive, you, John, you're the one who uh, posted about this on social media to try to get people, gather people together to come confront these child predators. Why, why am I just seeing young men there? Well, yeah, I think that's the thing is that a lot of these parents don't even know what's going on um, in their communities. And when I saw Libs of TikTok post about it, I bought my ticket immediately because I knew somebody needed to be there on the inside to record what was going on. And Sarah, this was nothing short of child grooming. Uh, it was extremely sexual. Um, and I talked to one of the attendees and interviewed them afterwards to get their thoughts on it. And she told me that, you know, there is some place that drag isn't appropriate for kids as long as it's not overtly sexual. But I don't know how this event mm -hmm. that we all witnessed could have gotten any more overtly sexual. Yeah. And if it was, it, it would have been it would have been porn. I mean, it was it was disgusting. But Alex is exactly right. It's not about drag. It's not about gay. It's not even about you know. It could be straight. It's about the sexualization of young kids, and it has no place in our society. Yeah, John, I want I want to hear from you before we get into the clips. Well, sure. I think that you summarized it very well. That it is about like weak men. And unfortunately, the millennials uh, are probably the most incompetent parents that we've ever had in terms of generations in this country. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, that can't go without indicting also the boomer generation by proxy who raised them. Now, I'm sure a lot of the boomers watching this were great parents. That's great, but you are the exception and not the rule. And so you have generations of incompetent parenting and fathers failing to either be present or to be strong male influences in the lives of their children. And then you have things like this as a result. And one of the things that I was telling the protesters who were the counter protesters and Antifa uh, militants who were screaming at me was 
that if someone had cared for you as much as we care about these children, then you wouldn't have turned out like this. Mm -hmm. And when they heard that, they just stopped yelling because they knew that it was true deep within them, but they weren't willing to confront the reality of it. And speaking of confronting the reality of it, um, I'm sure that at a, at a separate time, the three of us could have a debate about this, but I have to just reject the idea that it's not about gays, it's not about mm -hmm, pride, yeah. it's about just sexualizing children. It's like, I've jumped off the cliff, but I'm uncomfortable with the ground that is now approaching. It's like, unfortunately, we're going to, as Americans, have to conf confront the uncomfortable reality that if we want to climb out of the abyss that has become our culture, we're going to have to get at our ice picks and climb back up the slippery slope because this is less than 10 years we normalize gay marriage and look at where we are now. All of the moral majority and the crazy Christian right of the 1980s predicted that we would get to this point. We call them crazy. We call them Bible thumpers. They were all right. And so if we want to get out of this, unfortunately, we're going to have to go back to where we started. Yeah. Um, I want to so I want to play then some of these these clips that you guys got um, on the ground. So let's first you know what let's first watch the scene inside the bar where these children were uh, invited to walk on stage uh, with these drag queens. Watch. I need all my if you if you know and you think you can do it like we do it. I want you to come up here real quick. If you think you can do it, if you think you can walk the runway with the girl, who wants to be a diva for the day? All right, this is my partner in crime today. You ready to do this? On the count of three, here we go. One. Wow, that kid really looks like he wants to be there, guys. This is weird. Let's go. He looks so embarrassed. By the way, for those of you who are watching, or I'm sorry, and listening on podcast, the sign behind them says, it's not gonna lick itself. Let's go. Okay, I think we've seen enough of that. Um, so, I, I so I also saw, I don't know if we have this, but I also saw some of the children um, tipping mm -hmm. the drag queens. That although you were on the inside, right, Alex? You didn't get in. No, which we'll, they shut we'll, me down immediately. We'll, we'll, yeah. play, we'll play that. We'll play that here in a bit. But although you were the only one who actually got in on yeah. the inside, right? So they were tipping the drag queens. Was that sexual in nature at all? You know, I throughout every performance, the dancers were, were you know were doing sexual uh, sexual dancing, mm -hmm. and the parents were just feeding their kids dollar bills to hand out in front of the uh, the drag performers. Um, getting them real close, getting them in, you know, next to the sexual dancing. It was, it was grotesque. That is so sick. Um, were there, did you see any dads in the building? I did not. Actually, that's a good point. I didn't see any. There, were, there, was, a, there was a couple, actually. And I spoke to one father after the event was over that was going to the second show, I think. And they all claimed the same thing. You know, we're here as allies. We're here to support our LGBTQ youth. But I don't think, like John said, they understand where the, uh, the slippery slope leads. You know, it's, it's not supporting somebody and it's not love to uh, you know, enable them to continue this behavior. But Sarah, I saw kids that looked like they were one year old or younger. I saw toddlers in the audience, not just five, six, seven year olds, but toddlers. And apart from the emotional and mental abuse that was going on here, the physical abuse, I mean, it was loud music mm -hmm. and there, these, there's toddlers in here with, without fully developed eardrums. I mean, mm -hmm. that was, it, was, it was crazy to see, really. So what about, I saw a, a clip as well that showed um, a little boy who was like, trying to, he was playing a video game. He was like very obviously like removed from what was going on, just sitting there quietly playing a video game. It's almost as if he didn't want any part of it and it was being forced on him. Did well, you see him at all? I didn't see this, but Taylor was next to me and he said that he saw this child go up to the bar with his mom and the bartender asked the son, you know, are you gay? He said, no, I'm not. And the mom goes, no, don't listen to him, he is. <laughs> and he couldn't be any more uninterested. He didn't want to have, you know, be there. He was just on his, on his uh, DS, playing his thing. Um, so that's what Taylor Hansen said that he saw. And, you know, I believe it. There was a lot of kids in there that looked like they didn't have any idea where they were. They were just being drugged to some, some, uh, to some event that they had no idea what was going on. Now, um, Alex, you tried to get in and couldn't. Um, I want to play I want to play what was going on on the outside while uh, Aldo was on the inside. So let's watch Alex. let me let's play the clip and then I want to ask you a couple questions about it. Let's watch Alex getting kicked out. Yes, I just we're denying entry. we're asking you to leave. Oh my God. Yeah. They're denying me entry. They're being bigoted. <laughs> 
Look like how much fun he's having. Like, yeah, I thought you guys were inclusive, right? Hey. Are you guys trying to be inclusive? Uh, They're not letting me in the no game touch, anymore. No Look how inclusive Trying to assault you with yeah. flag. And this clip doesn't even show when I rip off the guy's mask, I don't think. This is Taylor's clip. But these people do, they get aggressive. I mean, they're trying to toe the line of what's legal and hide behind their mask. But they're the real cowards letting kids get sexualized like this. And and I think John said it best. These people were probably victims of abuse. They were. That's why they want to pay it forward. Yeah. I So... Still assaulting you. Yeah. Still By the assaulting way, you. These people are all local Antifa members, um, at least the people who coordinated that counter protest. And we know this because we've done work uh, at places like UNT, for example, where these same people show up. And they've got their Twitter account, which is called the So and So John Brown Gun Club. For those unfamiliar, this is this very, like, you know, fetishized uh, romantization of a guy named John Brown who was like a mass murderer who would go around and kill people who he perceived to be enemies to, like, socialism and equality. Mm -hmm. And they tweet things out, like little graphics that say, remember, no face, no case, which obviously means if you wear a mask and cover your face and the police aren't going to be able to identify you and, and make you face the consequences for whatever you've done. So, yeah, very disgusting and very uh, vicious people that we encountered that day. So, Alex, you, why did, did they tell you why they were denying you entry? Because I'm primetime 99, Alex, they're not going to let me up in that no way. The <laughs> same way that man was made for woman, Alex Stein was made for the camera. And they knew that they and knew they it. feared it. Well, they knew and, it. and John's right. Like, I've seen these guys. I've been to UNT. I've been to these protests. It's the same group of people where they're baklava or whatever the thing, the term is, the mask they wear to cover their face. Baklava. I, that's a dessert, I think. That's what it's I, but, called. Uh, yeah, is, is no, seriously. Baklava yeah. or whatever. I can't, yeah. guys, listen, I have a sixth grade uh, education. I, I don't, <laughs> a sixth grade reading level. But what I'm trying to say is, they're not going to let me in. And, uh, they let, the, Aldo did a great job. We really got to really give you and Taylor a big kudos because that footage is incredible and same with Isabella Riley. Mm -hmm. But for me being outside there, like not getting let in, that was probably the best thing because it let me go outside and confront the people walking out. So it was good that we had people on both sides but at the end of the day, I've never been more shaken. And this makes me sound like some snowflake. But just the fact that they were like, nah, 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 boo, boo. We're going to have this. We're going to sexualize these kids. And the fact that they were winning this culture war, that's what it kind of felt like a little bit until the protests got a little more intense. And we got the cops there. And then the vibes totally switched where once we confronted the drag queens outside, you could feel their shame. You yeah. could feel the energy around that entire event. And it was just, it was just off. And I'd like to point out, right after you were denied entry from uh, from the bar, they started closing all the curtains. They even yeah. put up posters with tape, um, like they did on election night, right? They mm. covered everything up so that they couldn't. People on the outside couldn't see what was going on on the inside, and that really says a lot about how they feel about it, even themselves, right? If they're not proud or they don't want to show people what's going on, mm. um, you know, that that's a sense of shame that they have themselves. And to that point. They're also not even willing to defend it as it is. So when they're talking about it on Twitter, they'll say, oh, look at these right-wing Christian fascists harassing a family-friendly pride event. <laughs> they won't call it what it yeah, is. Like, right. if it were really not bad, you'd say, you know, the family-friendly drag event or something. But right. they have to call it, no, it's a pride, pride event. event. And it really calls into question if there's really a difference between these things that sexualize children and pride events in general. Yeah, um, that's, these are all great points. Let me, um, let's go ahead and take a quick break. And then I want to get back to... Uh, you know what, I want to let the drag queens speak for themselves, <laughs> which they did, shockingly. I don't know what kind of magic this guy worked, but um, they did. I can't wait to get into that after the break. First, we want to thank our sponsor, Keeps. So, uh, look, losing your hair, I know, guys, you think it's embarrassing. It shouldn't be because it's just you're in your genes. It's in your DNA. You can't change it, but I can help you with that. Uh, Keeps will help you change that. Did you know that two out of three guys experience hair loss before they're 35? You don't want to gamble with your hair, all right? You can flip the odds in your favor and save your hair with Keeps. It's very, very easy. Uh, they give the same hair loss treatment options that you can go get if you act actually get in your car and have to drive to the doctor. Um, but they can do it. You can do it all in the comfort of your own home. And they have generic options available. So you are going to save a ton of money. So whether you're looking to prevent hair loss, stimulate hair growth, or take care of the hair you already have, your Keeps doctor will help you select the right products, develop a personalized hair saving routine that works for you, and they ship it directly to your door. You don't even have to get up off of your couch. Uh, you can message your Keeps doctor 24 seven. There's no reason not to try it, okay? You can visit keeps.com slash Y for 50% off your first order. That is five zero fifty percent keepscom slash Y. 
All right, so um, I mentioned, Aldo, you not only got on the inside, but you were able to interview some of the drag queens. Was this after the event had taken place? Yeah, so I waited for the event to end and uh, everything to clear out for the music to go down a little bit. Um, I did my best to blend in uh, during the event and afterwards. I'll leave it at that, but just so that... <laughs> Just so that I knew that they uh, that they might give me an interview after. Did you have to kiss any of them? Yeah. No, uh, no was there, I was were there, able to buy that. Were there glory holes involved? Or, yeah. no? When the next morning I saw Aldo and one of the organizers stroll out of his bedroom, <laughs> I knew that he it deserved was worth a Pulitzer. It now. Listen, <laughs> this is reporting, all right? I do the, I do the, the, the good reporting here, so. Um, so whatever magic touch you put on it, you did, and they felt comfortable enough to uh, to talk to you about it, about the, the actual event. Now, what I find fascinating before we uh, play this is that we are constantly hearing from the left that this is not, look, this is kids, they're born, somehow they're born this way, even though it's that they're not born this way and they want to become this way, but it's all the kids. It's not the adults pushing them into it. It's just the kids, yeah. um, you know, uh, they, they just, they knew that they were a different gender. Adults had nothing to do with it. It kind of doesn't square with what they tell Aldo in this clip, watch. So we just got done with the Drag Your Kid to Pride event at Mr. Mr. in downtown Dallas, and I am here with... Noelle Sinclair. What do you say to the conservative parents that wouldn't bring their children to an event like this? Why? Here's the thing, I don't think that there is any kind of issue with exposing children to this. So do you think exposing children to drag will result in more um, kids doing drag eventually? I think so. Yes. Um, and, and I hope so because... Correct like, answer. I, I hope so. Mm -hmm. Like I said, it's the biggest confidence booster. Like, mm. yes, it can be negative at times, but but I, I think that drag builds confidence. Mm. Do you think exposing kids to drag will make more pe more children go into drag eventually? I feel like yes, because I feel drag is such like an art form. There's so much dancing, there's hair, there's wigs, there's makeup. There's so many things that kids will like, will love to experience with. Oh. So I feel like a lot of kids will want to like dabble in everything that's going on in like drag. Really? Huh. Sounds to me like this is completely intentional to expose them at a young age so that they can get involved in it. Right. So there you have it. Straight from the horse's mouth. Exposing kids to drag will lead kids to start doing drag. And that's what you, you know, you hear this argument that, uh, you know, more kids are coming out as gay these days because it's more accepted and they feel that it's, it's accepted to come out and so they're able to. And, and that explains the large amount of kids that are associating themselves with LGBT um, the community. But what you see is not that it's just a result of acceptance. It's a result of it being pushed on the, the younger generations. And, you know, even Bill Maher did a, did a clip on this a couple weeks ago that you can, you can track it from generation to generation it almost doubles, you know, the percent of children or the percent of the group that identifies with the LGBT uh, group. So it's it's not a result of it is acceptance. It's a result of it being pushed on kids. Yeah. Wait, yeah. Now, I don't want to give Bill Maher too much credit too, but he also said, why are there so many more transgender kids on puberty blockers and gender reassignment surgery in Los Angeles and not Cleveland, Ohio? Right. right. Right, right. You can even track it, too, to show, because if that were the case, if all of a sudden America were just more accepting and everyone was coming out, you'd expect all the previous generations to have similar rates of coming out, but it's not. It's only in the younger generation. Moreover, there's no scientific basis for it either. They have poured millions of dollars into trying to find grant, or, uh, into grants to try to find a scientific basis or genetic basis for this happening, and they haven't. The most they can find is like some very minuscule correlations with different uh, genetic traits, but ultimately it will not manifest without some sort of environmental uh, predisposition or exposure. And, and then on top of that, the high percentage of people who transition, detransition, uh, or just simply grow out of it, because that's just what tends yeah, to Yeah, and I would just encourage everyone watching to go to Austin Fletcher's or Flecka's Talks on YouTube to see the entire uh, video, to see the full interviews, not just with the drag queens, but with the uh, attendees that were there uh, witnessing the event as well. So I want to, uh, Noelle, was that her name? No, Noelle, Noelle Sinclair. Noelle Sinclair. That's a dude, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. How do you yeah. feel as a mother seeing people take your essence and turn into a, like a costume? As if they could bear it, as if they could produce breast milk. This is all probably deeply offensive. I can, deeply I can offensive. produce breast milk, so I don't like you the can't? breast milk argument. Well, see me yes. after. But <laughs> I, think, I think it's actually more offensive than blackface because being a woman and being a mother is a, is a separate agree. identity, whereas like being black, like what does that really make you different other than skin color, maybe some cultural aspects, as opposed to like you know being a woman, uh, the difference of that compared to being a man. I mean, it's a, it's a very offensive thing that they're doing, and they've turned it into a nice little uh, performance and, and way to make money. 
Yeah. Well, well I, I hate to say this. Agree. Leah Thomas comes up every day, ranked 457th on the Men's University yeah. of Pennsylvania swim team, then goes and gets to be the you know top-ranked woman in the NCAA. Then they're cheerleading this. I mean, yeah. that is not that that takes away from greatest women. drag but, performance of all time. Right yeah, there. yeah no easy. kidding. Well, but and that's what blows my mind is that I keep asking you guys, where are all of the dads? Where are all of the men? Because it seems to be the women who are cheering on the erasure of themselves. And that's like, why, and that's what happens when. Oh, should I say this? Mm, He's gonna say it. I'm gonna say it. You wouldn't have this problem if women were sexually fulfilled. I'm sorry, but it's true. You have a generation of weak men, and okay, imagine like men who are as strapping and as like alpha as like your grandfather's generation. You look at the men in those black and mm -hmm. white photos. He mm -hmm. tells me the stories about in his fraternity house. You can see the, the previous classes of fraternities. Yeah. Those guys were all chads. Imagine if these women were going home to men like that. Yeah. That is why they're rebelling. You know, Julia Savola wrote about this, that women are not rebelling against men. They're rebelling against the shadow of men. They're upset because the most beautiful thing is a woman who is free to be fulfilled in her feminine essence. And, and be able to live and be vivacious however she would like. You have this decadent society that has created weak men who now are not able to provide that life to women, and so what do they do? They rebel. I mean, everybody knows. Women will nag. Imagine not being able to provide to them the life that they were bred to be able to have, their birthright. They're going to make your life hell. They're going to divorce you. They're going to get custody of your son. They're going to make him into a gay kid. How do you like that, ex-husband? Yeah. This is what's happening, and frankly, if every man were a little bit more like uh, you know, John Wayne, or who was the guy you compared me James to? James Dean. You would not have this problem on a societal level. You just wouldn't. Well, it's and true. you got to mention, too, the pornography, because when I was a kid, you know, we had a magazine we'd share on the weekends, and we hid under a bed. That's all the pornography we had. But now a kid can look on their internet, and they can see all this stuff. So they have the unreal expectations of sexual pleasure. So it's like we're just desensitized to sex. So that's probably why it's hard for people to get sexual pleasure in this yeah. day and age. Yeah, I mean, just look at a Hunter Biden's search history. I know. Some and I have. And it's some weird kinks going on that are available on the internet these days. Very weird. Um, I want to, so I want to bring back into the equation Noelle Sinclair, who Alex caught uh, outside the establishment walking to his Hyundai, I guess, with his with his boyfriend? Is, is that, am I getting that uh, yeah, correct? I, mean, I guess that was, because yeah. it's a dude, and he's with a guy who said that he was screwing him, so it's his boyfriend, so here's that exchange watch. For little children, do you like dancing for little children? You, don't you think can see this, Shannon. Yeah. Dancing well, around for little get the away from me. How, how cheerful disgusting? was he when he was talking to Aldo? Hey, get the away. Hey, well, you can't just touch me. You don't think that's disgusting? You don't think that's disgusting? You don't think that's disgusting? Dancing for little children. You should be a You should be ashamed of yourself dancing for little children. You should be ashamed of yourself. Is he a child? No. You guys dancing little children. You should be ashamed of yourselves. You're disgusting. Think about what you just did. First of all, good on you for, for confronting them about that. Um, and I know, John, you did some, some confronting as well, which we'll, we'll play here in a little bit. But um, what I really love most about that is you know that that nasty white trash boyfriend, as soon as they got in the car, he got an earful because he was busy yakking at you and not opening the door. <laughs> and the drag queen's like, open the door! And he's busy yapping his mouth. I feel like he probably got in trouble for that once he got in the car. Well, I don't even want to think about the, you know, Enter uh, their private sex life. That's like the last thing I want to think well, about. I, I was just talking about a conversation, well, Alex. In that not car, <laughs> because you know he was probably turned on. You know, the, no. yeah, a little bit because when the adrenaline's pumping, it kind of gets you uh, going. A well, little. listen, you saw how sweet he was to Aldo. Not so sweet when you no. confronted him. It was well, like a demon. I think I'm just no. better looking than him. No, on a serious <laughs> note, but on a serious note, when I confronted him, you could tell that he felt shameful. He felt like, oh, what am I doing? Because at the end of the day, like I said, I always say that term, but you can dance, drag. I don't care if they do that. But they're doing it in front of little kids. Mm -hmm. That's not their normal operating procedure. So when they get called out, you know, it makes you feel some sort of shame and guilt. And that's why he was so triggered. That's why they were projecting, oh, your mom this, your mom that. It's because he probably doesn't have a good relationship with his mother. That's just pure projection. So these people, if we call them out, maybe they'll be a little more shame to do this in the future. No, I couldn't agree more that we have to bring back shame. But something I do want to mention, and uh, you guys may disagree with me, but I, I, I do have a genuine empathy for these people yeah. because these are broken individuals. Yeah, they are. And, you know, good. They're not getting help. Evil does not come from good, yeah. right? You and know, they were probably evil comes abused. from evil, and good comes from good. And yeah, like you just said, these people were probably abused um, sexually. And I think you can even look up at the, the statistics of uh, these drag performers or of trans people that you can link this stuff back to, to childhood sexual trauma. Mm -hmm. 
And so, you know, empathy and compassion for their situation and why they're doing what they're doing doesn't come without accountability. But I think that you do need to understand that aspect to fully to fully grasp grasp the situation. He's totally right about that. There was some pushback, not a lot, but a little bit to what we did. People saying, well, that wasn't very Christ-like. Like, oh Jesus was not nice. Jesus was good. There is a difference. Yeah, and nobody is beyond redemption. That's, of course, true. But we're also not supposed to try to be more merciful than God. This is written about in 1 John. You know, there is a certain point where God's mercy will have a limit. Mm -hmm. You have to ask for redemption. You have to repent. But at a certain point, we will all be judged. So it's not our job to make that judgment, but it is our job to use good and force to shame these people into acting accordingly uh, because our, you know, children otherwise are going to be victimized. You know, I think it's Matthew 18, 6 says it's better for those types of people to have a stone tied around their neck and to be tossed mm -hmm. into the ocean mm -hmm. than for them to have this influence over children. So keep that in mind and maybe pay a little bit less attention to this like Sunday school Jesus was a hippie type type of but that message is actually so important and it's necessary for the shame aspect because these people are craving a community they're craving mm -hmm. someone to love them and to accept them into their community that you know they started the show off by saying we're here and we feel loved and we don't feel judged and yes we'll shame you for doing evil but stop the trans stuff stop the drag in front of kids and come back to christ come into our community where we will show you real love not this fake love that you're purporting to be good because it's not yeah um, all right, we've got, oh, John's itching to say one more thing. Well, he, he just reminded me of an, uh, an altercation that I had outside, which was there was, uh, I believe, a 15-year-old, roughly. It was the, the person wearing the shirt that said um, Trans Lives Matter, I think, the, in the black shirt. Oh, I believe, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was having a conversation with this person cordially, and um, I was giving my honest opinion about their condition. And there was this woman who interrupted our conversation and said, hey, I love you, to the kid. This very sort of performance, I called, I was like, no, you don't. You don't know this person. Yeah. What you're doing right now is a caricature of an yeah. actual, like, yeah. strong and loving influence in that child's life. You don't love that person, so don't say you do because you don't. Yeah. Um, all right, we've got, we've got more to come. First, we want to thank our sponsor, First Liberty Institute. So look, court packing can be a really big danger to our country. We just heard from a representative just the other day, if they don't get what they want when it comes to gun rights, they will do whatever it takes. I'm sorry, gun control, they will do whatever it takes, uh, including packing the court. So if we don't stop them from installing four more justices, uh, they're going to rig the system in their favor. And it's obviously going to be very catastrophic for not just our court, but our country and our entire way of life. We cannot let that happen. That is why First Liberty Institute needs you to join them. They're gathering a coalition of one million patriots to say no to court packing, no to the liberal agenda, and no to the Supreme Court coup. You will be uh, in the ranks of Franklin Graham, former U.S. Attorney, Attorney General Ed Meese, Dr. James Dobson, the Family Policy Alliance, the Heritage Foundation, and over 400,000 people just like you. They are all on board. you got to go sign your name now. That's all they're asking you to do. Sign your name over at SupremeCoup.com. That is C-O-U-P, SupremeCoup.com. Uh, just to put a little bow on Noel Sinclair, uh, we saw Noel being interviewed by Aldo, seemed very sweet and cheerful, demeanor completely changed, when Alex confronted him outside of the establishment. But I just wanted to point out, Andy No did some digging on this particular person. Apparently his real name is Andrew Carroll. And uh, Andy went through his social media, found out that um, a little Andrew here wanted to become an educator. So one of these, I guess we don't have the actual like picture of it, but there's a screenshot of him talking about wanting to become a teacher. Um, and then, Alex, you pointed out in this picture that is shown of him that we just showed uh, on his Instagram page, the caption says what? Want to get pizza, which is a declassified code word for child grooming in order to get kids because you can't say online, oh, I want a seven-year-old kid. You know, you have to say terms like pizza, like walnut. They use terms like map, minor attractive person. So these code words, these dog whistles, are how people communicate with signs and symbols. And we know, listen, you can say, oh, pizza gate's fake, this and that. I don't care what you say. These declassified symbols are a way for people to communicate online in order to sex traffic children. That's not a conspiracy. And posting stuff like want to get pizza is very sketchy and it's very demonic and evil. Yeah, considering the 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 source, right? Yeah, so it just it just makes you wonder. Um, yeah. All right, I want to get to 
John, I want to get to your side of uh, what was going on. So you did some confronting of your own, which can that I just face. say, I'm so, I know, I'm so, pr I, can, I am so proud to work with you guys. Um, although I know you're not officially, you know, a Blaze TV contributor, but I consider you as part of the family. And I just have to say, I'm just so proud that like no one else was there. Right, no one else was there except Blaze TV, and um, you guys are just doing really, really great work. But John, you of course showed up with your megaphone. Well, Brian Stelter was there. He just was in he drag. Was in he was in drag. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, he, well, he was part of the show. He doesn't <laughs> yeah, count. Yeah, yeah, I never right. knew he was that flexible. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, right. So, uh, John confronted some of the parents outside the establishment while they were waiting to be let in. Let's play some of that. I only have one question: Why do you want to put an axe wound in between your son's legs? Stop. <laughs> We've got kids here. And they're the ones that cussing and being mm -hmm. disgusting. Open the door. Open the door. Let us in and get the yeah. tickets. You're not making America great. Right? Yes, we are. What do you mean? You're making America worse. You're bringing your children we need to, go. to this event. You need to go now. Someone better be well, prepared. See how shaken they are when they, when they roll up and the protesters roll up? You must repent. I wonder if the mama bear instinct is going to come out in three years when the mainstream Democrat party platform is they want to rape your kids. Oh. And they're all going to think it's one big smug little joke, these people, by the way. Understand that there is a bigger difference between 10 years ago and now than there would be between now and in five years when they're openly advocating for pedophilia like they've already started doing. You people are the symptom of a dying society, and you know it. You're scaring children! Shut the up! Oh. Shut the not you. Oh, shut the right, because that's what you do shame. to not scare children. All right, we've shame seen enough of this rainbow bright. Uh, John, that was. Uh, listen, I my my favorite part of that video. I was so proud when these women had the audacity to say. There are children here. Mm. <laughs> and they're all like, Duh. that's the point. <laughs> yes, we know. That's why we're here. Well, I'm very glad that you were proud of my performance there. You I know, was. There, there was a certain savoir faire with the, with the megaphone that I think was very effective. And I mean, you even took time out of your day to text me specifically and say that I had James Dean energy, yeah. I had big energy. I don't know what any of this, of course, means, but I think that it was an endorsement nonetheless. And it was just important. I mean, nothing is scarier to these types of Truly. people than just a squad of young men just walking up on Con them and confronting confident. them. Exactly. Yeah. And that's one thing that I really love. And we don't get enough credit for this in the bigot community. We don't care about what color you are, what nationality. As long as you are also bigoted towards the symptoms of dying societies, you're more than welcome. And you can see that as evidenced by a very diverse community of bigots that was, of course, strolling up on these people with the megaphone. And yeah, it was really important because I didn't think I was going to be able to get in. So we had everybody doing what they were best at. We had people infiltrating. We had Primetime 99 getting in their face. And then I had my army of young men. And we just, mm, and it was just so good. Conservative Avengers assembled. <laughs> yeah, it was literally like the homophobic Avengers. And it was so cool. And everyone did their own thing. The homophobic no, it Avengers. Was... But you don't even have to be homophobic. Like, it, take that. Your personal feelings, remove them from the equation. There are, I think there are plenty of mainstream Americans, even a lot of lesbian or gay people that I know, who still are not okay with this because at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter uh, what you want to do as an adult. We're talking about grooming children. S Sarah, it's the same thing with Sarah, all the schools. I'm Alexandria Stein, I'm gender <laughs> fluid. So I represent the trans community and this was different than the trans community. This was an attack, an assault on kids. Like that woman said, there's kids here. Yeah, they shouldn't be here. This is a bar right. with people dancing in thongs. No thank you. Yeah. The man with the megaphone has talked about this extensively on his channel, where really? he uploads frequently. And it's like <laughs> this idea, you know, I've heard these arguments throughout the, the decline of our country that have always been something to the effect of, well, you know, I don't care what a private individual does in the privacy of their own home. What is a private individual? You are the same person when you step outside of the home that you are in the home. And if we normalize and condone immoral acts, which are immoral, I mean, we're a Christian society, we understand what evil is. If you're only willing to protest the most obvious manifestation of evil, which is when it targets kids, then you can't be surprised when all of the other manifestations of evil that you allowed to happen lead up to that. Mm. So I just don't think it's enough to be able to say, well, you know, I don't like it when this happens, but everything else, hey, live and let live. It's like that's the mentality that we've heard for the last 60 years, and not coincidentally, that is why we are now. And I understand it makes people uncomfortable to be like, wait a minute, I'm going to have to be called mean on Facebook for more things? And it's like, yeah, 
Sorry, yeah. just how it works. So, I mean, this this makes a lot of sense coming from a Christian fascist leader, John Doyle. <laughs> True. Which is True. what they which is what they're calling you now. I want to show this. Uh, you mentioned them earlier. The Elm Fork John Brown Club. <laughs> they said Christian fascist leader John Doyle encourages police to quote go in there and put bullets in all their heads end quote, and then another quote, that's what the badge is for. That makes what I said sound so much more interesting than it actually is. I'll, I'm imagining you'll play the clip. Yeah, we have So it. Just, just go ahead and, well, okay, actually, first the tweet makes it sound like I was like trying to, huh, we should go in there and just start shooting people. What it was was a much more just matter of fact way because I was asking these police officers, why can't you just go in there and take the kids out? Mm -hmm. And they said, well, you know, we're going to have to file a police report and get a blah, blah, blah. And I said, I hate how bureaucratized everything is now. You know, the, the sheriffs in days past would have just gone in there and said, oh, this is wrong, and just start shooting, you know, pedophiles. <laughs> and I just said, that's just more efficient. And I said, that's what the badge is for. We're trusting you as the, the authority to make the call. So it was really actually an argument against big government, against government waste and inefficiency and bureaucracy. And they're making it seem like I was saying we should, because, again, they don't want to acknowledge what the event actually was. So they're making it sound like John Doyle went there and said, we should just start go shooting gay people. And it's like, that's not what it was. I was saying, hey, why don't you guys just, like, go in there like the sheriffs of days past? So you can play the clip. You'll notice my tone was not indignant. It was not mm -hmm. inciting. It was just very like nerdy and matter of fact. Which so. is what John's typical it's, it's tone true. is. Yeah. So watch. The sheriff's in Texas and Dale has been going on. This is their this is their smoking gun on you. Yeah, and it's funny because of course it's clipped down, it's out of yeah. context because I was out there all day having conversations with with protesters and with police officers, and this is the biggest evidence that what I said wasn't that controversial. I said it to three uniformed Dallas police officers in Dallas. Yeah. I mean, you're talking about liberal DAs, liberal judges, liberal police officers. Half the people who were there responding to this, keeping us out of it, were literally gay, and that was made for some interesting sort of conflict of interest. But it's like, yeah, you know, John Doyle, who's saying these things. I'm talking to police officers like, hey, you know, you guys should have in days past would have been doing this. And I was making an argument not for violence, but for why does everything have to be so mm, behind the desk and right. blah, blah, blah. We know this is wrong. Go in there and do something about it. Right. And what I was saying was that, you know, 200 years ago, it would have been like more extreme because of the attitudes. But that's not to say that you should just go in there and start like hurting people. I'm just saying that like people would have trusted themselves to take action and you guys aren't, which is why this is happening in the first place. And so, I got to say this, and this is the same police force, DPD, that Amanda Geiger walks into a guy's apartment and shot and killed him sitting on his couch. So listen, the DPD, they'll shoot you. They're not afraid to shoot you. I, so I want to get into, let's go ahead and take a break, because I want to get into the police response to this. I think it is very, very telling. Uh, we'll get into that after the break. All right, I do want to get into the uh, police response because it was very peculiar. Alex, I know that you spoke with them and you kind of shamed them for doing nothing. They're standing outside protecting these child groomers who are on the inside. They're doing nothing. But they also, uh, it seemed to me, I'll let you guys tell me, but it seemed to me, especially from this video clip we're about to play, that the police uh, had no problem with all of these Antifa people assaulting you guys for, uh, you know, operating within your rights. But when these guys were assaulting some of you, the police did nothing. Watch. So this guy's just trying to walk down the street. He's freaking out. Taylor Hansen was covering it, man. He got everything. Look at that guy Look prancing that in walk. front of him. He owns prancing. The place. <laughs> And they're trying to chest bump him. I mean, that is literally assault. Yeah, that's, I mean. yeah. Also not smart. This guy is very large. Also, look, there's like a dozen of them. They can barely stop him. And he's not trying, you know, he's literally going That guy's an ex-Marine too, by the way. Wow. So literally blocking him. And I guess we don't have the, the end of it, but at the end of it, the officer finally comes up and what he says to the black man who you saw walking and getting assaulted was, could you please lift your foot off of their flag? Because the flag that they had just waved in his face, I guess he ended up stepping on. And so no problem with all of the assault that had taken place. But please remove your foot from their flag. Yeah, those two other black guys who walked up were undercover Dallas police officers who had spoken to me because they were like, people say you organize this event. And I was like, me? <laughs> 
I was right here, <laughs> you know, just like, I, I didn't do any of that. And so, but they were trying to like, you know, get us to shut down. And so, yeah, they would only go after that guy. I mean, he's getting assaulted by a dozen people mm -hmm. and they move those people aside to go up to him and say, sir, you know, you're going to have to stop. And he's like, what are you talking about? I'm just walking. And so that's what you really have to understand about police. Blue Lives Matter is a response to Black Lives Matter, which was a movement that sought to turn people against police to say that they're unfairly targeting black people for no reason. We know that's not true. Blue Lives only matter if they're doing the right thing, if they are serving a system which is right and just. Our system currently is against American patriots, and therefore these people are just following orders the same way the servants of other regimes that are illegitimate and immoral were in days past. Mm -hmm. These are not our friends. They were trying to stop this guy from walking down the street to go ask parents why they were trying to have their children groomed by men dressed like women performing uh, in, in drag. And so, yeah, I mean, it was a very sad sight to see. Yeah, Alex. And we failed to the cops, but we did get legislation now is going through the House here in Texas making drag shows for children illegal. So even though the cops didn't act, these cops are terrible. You know, like you said, they're order followers. They're going to do whatever their boss says. Like in Uvalde, they're going to stand down for 90 minutes while, you know, 21 people get shot. These cops don't care. All they're going to do is follow the leader, whoever tells them. So... Luckily, we did. This was a win because now we enacted mm -hmm. some change. You, you say that, and I want to take I want to take the W. But technically speaking, and this is of course uh, Brian Slayton, who has just announced uh, he's a Texas state representative. He's just announced that he will file legislation to ban drag shows in the presence of minors uh, as a result of what happened over the weekend. But technically, this was already supposed to be illegal, right? We won the culture battle, but we haven't won the culture war. Yeah, I mean, fair. But it's like, but if, so So yes, step one, great. Um, but step two is getting the police to actually enforce the laws, right? Yeah. Because if the police won't go in there and do anything and shut it down. Yeah, well, Sarah, it's, it's the same thing with the COVID closures, right? Like it's, yeah. it's unconstitutional to shut down places of worship, but they still did it. Right. And so I, I think this is good that we're having legislation that uh, is, is explicitly coming after these things because as we've seen for like the last the last years with COVID is they will take any opportunity they can to yeah. take away our rights and to break the law for their own um, for their own agenda. Yeah, hopefully it's just like closing the loophole. Because well, I feel like they, they were trying to find a loophole and exploit it, and hopefully this one will be uh, specific enough to No, but to I just got to say, I can't believe they ever closed a church. I mean, when do you need a church more than in time of a pandemic <laughs> okay. and they close it? It just doesn't make sense. And now we have a bunch of mentally ill, uh, liberal white women grooming their children, so that's great. Uh, all right, we got to take a quick break. We'll be back. I want to thank all of you for uh, being there, being uh, all of our eyes and ears to really show what is happening on the ground at these events. Uh, we need to be on the lookout, super vigilant, especially during Pride Month, um, because as John pointed out, it is under the guise of Pride events and not what it is, which is grooming your children. Um, I, I want to give you guys last word on this particular issue. Are you? Do you? Do you have any regrets? Are you, no, what, what do you think? I don't need to be thanked at all. I just want to try to actually help children. You know, that was the most disgusting thing. So listen, I don't want to be thanked. It's just kind of doing what we should be doing, standing up for what is right. And, and I want to see more people. I think that's the thing. Although more people need to be showing up and speaking out and confronting these people. Yeah, no, my last point I want to make to people is that, you know, every kid's childhood is normal because they have no frame of reference. So everything that happens to them is normal. But we know that this isn't, right? What do we know? That 15 years ago, even the furthest left Democrat couldn't endorse homosexual marriage. And now here we are now, and every Democrat is forced to endorse transsexual lifestyles to kids, you know, trans surgeries for kids. And so we have to understand how far we've really gotten yeah. off the beaten path. Yeah, John. I don't want to rain on the parade or be cynical because that's just really not in my nature. But it's not? I will say, no, it's just not. <laughs> but I will say that uh, it is kind of interesting to see how we're being treated like we're coming home from the Pacific in 1945. Because, and Sarah, this is not to discredit what we did, especially no, these two guys I, in particular, because they're point. the people who got the footage that is making this a national conversation mm -hmm. even more so now. But it's like, I mean, we attended an event. We were there for a few hours, right. cost me 12 bucks for parking, and people were like, this is incredible. And it's like, it kind of just shows how apathetic everyone has been for so long mm -hmm. that even people just being like, hey, we should probably do something about this, is treated like it's the biggest thing ever. And it's like, if everybody watching or that's DMing us, like, this is incredible, did mm -hmm. that or yeah. even half that, we would be having a much different country five years from now. I completely agree, which Nailed is a great it. point to yeah. uh, like follow libs of TikTok, find out what's going on and show up. Guess what? The other side is doing it. So you better get your ass out there and participate and confront this Great again. Do it. <laughs> Thank you guys. Make sure to follow all of these guys. All right. Thanks guys.